Welcome to the American Citizens Abroad podcast. I'm Michelle, and today I'm chatting with Kate Dow, the founder and owner of Career Denmark. Welcome, Kate. Thanks for chatting with us today. Thank you so much for having me, Michelle. It's uh, lovely to be here. Could you tell us a bit about yourself and your expat experience? Sure. I am, well, you can hear that I'm American, obviously, and uh, <laughs> but I come from Michigan. I like to say I'm from Detroit because it sounds more hardcore, but <laughs> I really come from a small town <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. And my story is such a long story, but I'll try to sum it up quickly. So I was influenced to actually living in Europe by two exchange students who came to my high school. One was a Dane and one was a German. And they changed my life forever, seeing another perspective on how the world is from their eyes. And so I decided to study abroad in Germany. That was, oh gosh, that was a long time ago. Then I said, yes, I'm going to come back. And so I studied at Central Michigan, studied abroad, and then went back and then came back to Germany in the same program. The program was called USAC. And they are a nonprofit organization that focuses on helping American students study abroad and have an amazing experience. Because of that program, I decided to stay. And so I was an au pair for a little while so I could improve my German. And then I decided to do my master's in Germany. I've always been very thankful to the German system because I was able to afford my education and my master's program there. And then Love happened and I met the love of my life through the mutual friend from years ago in high school. And he was studying in Aarhus, which is the second biggest city in Denmark. We met at a party called Festalauna. For those listening who don't know what Festalauna is, it's basically uh, where you take the American Halloween and the Mexican fiesta, put it together and you have Festalauna. So yeah, we met at this party and one thing led to another and we've been together for now 10 years in total. I ended up trying to do my PhD in Germany and it didn't work out. While I was studying in Germany, I was also an English teacher teaching children English. I also taught at a prison in Flensburg where I was teaching the prison guards English so they can communicate to those who are being held because some of them didn't speak German very well. Those are some of the things I did, but as things weren't really working out for me at the time, I was advised by a friend of mine to apply for a job in China. So I applied for a position in China as an English teacher, and I received an offer with a very lucrative package deal. And then I talked to my Danish boyfriend, spoiler alert, he's my husband now, and told him about this offer. What happened with that is that then once I told him, He was like, well, why don't you come in and move in with me and live with me here in Denmark? For me, that was just as scary as taking the leap for China, because that would have been the next step that we would have naturally taken in our relationship. And I think he also didn't want me to go to China because our relationship would have been over, I'm pretty sure. I remember thinking about it and making a list of all these like the positive and negatives of going to China, positive and negatives of moving to Denmark, or even staying in Germany for that matter. And then I realized after some time that this list didn't matter. And I realized I just wanted to be happy. And so I decided to, spoiler alert, move to Denmark. <laughs> Before moving to Denmark, I had to reinvent myself because I have this humanities degree in European studies. I knew that I couldn't really do anything with it in Aarhus, so I was like, okay, what is in demand of the market now? And at that time, once I analyzed my skills and competences, sales was in very, very high demand. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go for this. And I tried to get a job before getting the visa so I can get the work visa. It wasn't working out. But then once I moved to Denmark under an old scheme that doesn't exist anymore in Denmark now, within a few weeks, I was able to receive a position. Then fast forward, I worked in the sales startup tech industry for four and a half, five years. And I've had many positions, unfortunately, within a short period of time. 
what I was experiencing was that a lot of internationals or foreigners were coming to me for advice on job searching because they were having such a difficult time. And I remember actually with a colleague of mine where I was in this Danish course with her, she's also an American, she's highly educated with a PhD. And she was like, Kate, hey, I don't know like why you are so good at what you do because I've been looking for two years and nothing and you can just snap your fingers and get a job. Like <laughs> as something uh, within sales within a few weeks and I would kill for a position like that if I could even get that. So then what I started doing while I was working at these companies was starting to do a, kind of like a volunteer basis where I would do workshops and talks. And they would just be packed every time. And I just realized that there was a need for something like this. And then a friend of mine advised me to start my own business. And I kept pushing the advice away and said, no, I'm not a businesswoman. I don't want to do my own business. I just want to be comfortable <laughs> with the salary, <laughs> you know, and what I do. And in life just kind of pushed me in this direction. I decided to take the leap and said, you know what, the signs are there. And now I work with a lot of different municipalities. I work with something in Denmark called the Unemployment Insurance System and where I work with those type of organizations and companies. I work with other organizations that help internationals with their job search to give them different training and a different perspective from an international's point of view on job searching. The list goes on and on and on. <laughs> so that's, and I do coaching as well. And so, yeah, and that's what I currently do now. That is quite a story. <laughs> so my next question was going to be, what is Career Denmark? What inspired you to create it? But you answered that already. It is about teaching internationals how to communicate their value and not only in a Danish cultural context, because it's very different than how you do it in the United States or anywhere else in the world for that matter. But also taking these concepts and perspectives without losing yourself in the process. I've also taken some of the American perspectives on recruitment and how you do recruitment in Denmark, seeing it work for internationals here as well. So I've kind of found a way and mix and it's not only just some of the American perspectives on things. It's also mainly about communication and how to communicate your value in, I wouldn't say in the Danish language, but it's more of the Danish cultural language, if you get my meaning. So that's a non-traditional approach in connecting talent to companies. Can you explain why it works better than something more traditional? I guess it would depend on what you mean by traditional and non-traditional, because let me explain some of the cultural differences. In the United States, it's, and please correct me if I'm wrong, when I talk to my American clients, it's not common to have an engaging conversation with the hiring manager in a job ad. Whereas in Denmark, that's very, very common to do. That it's expected of you to take initiative and be proactive because that is very much in not only the Danish workplace, but the culture in general is to do that. And you have to build that professional relationship and how to network as well. That is also another approach is the networking and using it on LinkedIn, this idea of coffee meetings how to go about uh, the CV and your motivational letter, because in the Danish traditional sense, it's very common to have a picture in your CV, whereas in the United States, you don't have a picture in your CV. And so it's just so different in that context. And what makes Denmark a great destination for Americans? Oh, gosh, for many reasons. I am a personally a big fan of the Danish healthcare system. Bernie Sanders, during his campaign for the presidential race, he very much heavily promoted Denmark and all those things he says are true. Like I'm living that. I love the healthcare system in the way that we don't need to have this extra insurance you're provided for. If you, for example, need cancer treatment that's paid for by your taxes. Yes, we have the highest taxes in the world, but it all balances out. My son, he's also a Danish citizen, half Danish, half American. He's going to have free university for his life, and he can decide to take that to the United States. Probably won't be paid for all of it, but he can take some of it, and then the rest he can find scholarships if he wants. And also, what I love is the daycare system, and it's so much cheaper. Like, I know I was talking to my sister, and she was paying, I think, 
$50 a day for daycare, and that's quite expensive. Whereas Denmark, it's subsidized. That's controlled by the municipalities. So it will be probably higher than Copenhagen and Aarhus versus if you're out in the middle of nowhere, maybe you pay half of that. I think we pay like less than $20 a day, and that also includes food. And also what I really like is this work and life balance. That's what I loved about working in Denmark is that it's very much like eight to four or nine to five. There's a lot of flexibility in that way where you have less work hours and that you have more time for your family and friends and your hobbies and what you want to do. In the Danish culture, it's very much about a happy employee is also a happy employee at home and they want people to be happy at home so that then they don't bring it into the workplace. <laughs> <laughs> so I really enjoyed that. And also salaries are higher, things in general expenses are higher as well. But I find that you can have a very good life here. And some people think about the taxes and so on. And even in Denmark, you have a 200% tax on your car, but you don't really need a car. Not really, unless you live out and like go work at Lego and Billund, then you need a car. I don't have a car. Mm -hmm. I just go everywhere with public transport. And I really enjoy that and like that a lot. I really like this idea of trust as well in Danish culture and in Danish workplace. You're just expected to do your job and it's very much working independently and teamwork. I think that's also quite attractive is that in Denmark, It's a very, very flat hierarchy. So a CEO would not look down on someone who's a janitor, for example. They consider themselves equals in that regard. It's very, very laid back. It's not formal at all. There's many reasons, but I find those reasons to be the most attractive, in my opinion, on why Americans should consider to immigrate to Denmark. Speaking of the workplace, do you find that looking for a job in Denmark is different than looking for one in the U.S.? And do you think your approach could work in the States as well? I don't think it would work very well in the States, in my approach. I think that some things would have to change being able to call the hiring manager, for example, and asking questions and building that relationship. And also how you approach with networking on LinkedIn, for example, because in Denmark we have, it's a cultural, I don't know, phenomenon called coffee meetings. In UK, they call them informational meetings. In Denmark, they wouldn't call them informational meetings because that would be too formal. <laughs> so, for example, when you approach people on LinkedIn, Danes are a lot more direct Not in a rude sense, but they want to know exactly why you want to meet them. Whereas in the United States, you're like, hi, how are you? It seems a little bit more fluffy when you approach people with networking and especially on LinkedIn. They either approach you in a sales perspective where they want to sell you something or you're a lot more fluffy in that context. Whereas in Denmark, they're like, why are you connecting with me? please get straight to the point. And I think sometimes for Americans, that approach would be quite rude, I think, to some people, to even some extent. It's really about finding that balance and also approaching companies. I don't think it would be able to work in a job ad unless the employer decides, hey, you know, let's talk and have a conversation. I don't think that would work. And for example, in a CV, uh, I mentioned the picture, which wouldn't fly in, in the United States, mm -hmm. really. But also you have something called a personal profile. It is three to five sentences that summarizes very quickly your background based on the job ad because you have to target it. And then you also have to balance your soft skills and your hard skills. And in Denmark, a lot of the times it's not so much about your technical skills, but they also come into play your soft skills. And sometimes that's even more stress than your hard skills that you need to have because it's very much stressed about being the right fit. It, it, they do in the United States too, but what they mean is that your personality has to fit with the team. And what they mean by fitting your personality is about your soft skills. I think this approach would be very difficult to implement unless the culture changes. What are the biggest obstacles Americans encounter when looking for work in Denmark? The visa, finding a sponsor, that's the biggest hurdle, I think. It is a struggle. And that is one of the advice that I give 
to Americans is that if you want to be in Denmark, you have to take this seriously and you have to know that you're going to put your effort, time and investment into it because it is very difficult to immigrate for a lot of uh, internationals, but for Americans, it's especially, or non-EU citizens for that matter. And the only way is to start simply applying for jobs while you're in the United States. In order to go over that hurdle, you need to understand how to apply for a job in the Danish cultural context and how to do this because it is so different and how to network. What I also advise Americans before coming to Denmark is take a vacation here, tour here, talk to people here and see if this is what you really want to do. Because unless you either are recruited or when you're job searching or you have a background that is in high demand, it's going to be very difficult to get to come here. You can't just come and pack your things and then look for a job for three months. That doesn't work like that. You need to find that employer who says that I am willing to pay you a salary that meets the expectations for the visa. You wrote a blog post about the Danish concept, and you're going to have to help me with the pronunciation of Hig. Or is it Hig? Hygge. Hygge. Thank you. Hygge. Hygge. <laughs> Could you explain it to our audience and how does it apply to those looking for work or working in Denmark? Yeah, so Hygge is a Danish cultural concept. The best word to translate it is cozy. You do it mostly in the winter. That's another thing about Denmark is that it's cold, it's dark, there's not a lot of sun. <laughs> It's sunny in summer and in the spring, but it's going to be dark a lot of the time. So what Danes do to overcome this darkness is to practice this idea of huga, of doing something that makes you feel good or puts you in a cozy environment. So that could be reading a book with your most fuzzy blanket on a couch and lighting a candle and putting on some incense. This is a very typical idea of huga. It could also be doing certain hobbies like gardening or playing board games. And that would be considered huga. Anything that makes you feel comfortable and puts you in this place where you're relaxed. I wouldn't say it has anything to do with job searching per se, but in the Danish workplace, what I'm starting to see is that they're trying to help employees especially the foreigners or the internationals, understand this concept of huga and they have a huga room, for example, where you can go into this room and you can read a book and light a candle or, you know, in your blanket where you can learn and grow, for example, like if you need to sit down and learn a little bit more about innovation or business skills, then you can sit down and read. And that's very much encouraged in the Danish workplace because growth is very important for an employee to grow and learn something new. So it's very common where some Danish workplaces have their own little library, for example, where you can learn different skills and so on. So that's how it's kind of starting to transcend into the Danish workplace. You see it more with scale ups and some startups where they're doing this. And you can see where some of the bigger companies like dance commodities are transcending and doing this idea. But this is a very recent phenomenon within the last few years. Huga has been around for a while. Transcending it into the workplace is starting to come about. Another interesting blog post on your site speaks about four steps that will help those who have been fired to handle it with grace and character. Could you go over those steps with us? The first step that you should do is to handle your notice period, because in a lot of Danish jobs, or in your contracts, you have a three month notice period, like a probation period, or sometimes even a one month, most common, it's three months. What happens sometimes is when you're let go, it's not because it's your fault. A good chunk of the time, it's the employers who realize that sometimes they invest in these personality tests, or they talk to you and they have a good feeling. Sometimes they find, well, this is not really working out. And it has nothing to do with you. It's just that the personality doesn't quite fit as good as they thought it would, for example. It can also be sometimes where the company's strategy changed or there's a company merger, uh, another example. And a lot of the times it's really not your fault at the end of the day. 
Denmark, you have to remember, is the size of Maryland. <laughs> it's it's a very, very small country and people know people, right? What I love about Denmark is that Danes are very kind and very caring, willing to go all their way to help you. And if they see the fault in why they hired you, for example, or something happened, they will help you get into your next employment and help you with that recommendation. So it's really, really important to leave the workplace on a positive note so that then they can't say anything bad about you. And definitely, I always recommend that they write a recommendation letter or even have it on LinkedIn because LinkedIn is huge in Denmark. It's more than 67% of the Danish population uses it. LinkedIn is an important aspect. It's important that you leave with a smile on your face, right? And then the second step is to, now that I think about it, this is a bit late for this step because you should do it before you start a company is to sign up for a union. To be honest, I'm not very knowledgeable about how unions work in the United States, but where I come from in my community, it's normally shown as something that's quite negative. You can't compare unions to your home country, to Denmark. It's so different. Actually, to add to that question about why you should come to Denmark is because there are great paternity and maternity leave benefits here. Even when I had my child, I had about a year of paid maternity leave, which is what a lot of Americans would wish to have as well. A lot of these benefits and laws that Denmark has is because of unions and unions have shaped that. And they're very, very strong here. And it's very important that even before you are hired into a company, you need to sign up for a union. Maybe I could even change the blog title to where you need to go to your union and ask for advice. Because sometimes it does happen, and I've had experiences with this personally as well, where you are fired on an illegal basis. Or this is very, very rare in my circumstances where you would have a conflict, but it does happen. And that's what your union does. They can look and see if your firing was illegal or not. And then if it is illegal, they would hire a lawyer. In Denmark, lawyers are super expensive, like it is anywhere in the world for that matter. If they find it deemable, then you would go to court or you would make processes to go to court. And it's really, really important to make sure that everything is, is okay with that. I couldn't stress it enough. In my experiences, the union has been the best investment I've ever made in Denmark. And it's also tax deductible. So you get your money back anyway. And it's also important to relax and let it go and move forward. I know this from my own experiences as well, because I mentioned I've had so many positions within a short amount of time, is to not be too hard on yourself because you need to focus on the job search. And I think a lot of the times, I know this from my own self, that we blame ourselves and said, I could have, should have done this. I could have done this. And a lot of the times it's the employer who made the mistake. And you can see this as an opportunity to move on and to be in a better place. And it's about changing your mindset at the end of the day. And then the last step is just get a new job. To go into the hunting mode and start searching for the next job and to look for the future and to start that process because you never know what the future may bring and, and something better will come along. Are you heavily engaged with the American expat community in Denmark? What is it like? Who is it composed of? I am to some extent. At least in my area, there's not a lot of American meetups that I know of. A lot of them are on Facebook. So that's what I also advise Americans before coming to Denmark is join different groups on Facebook and just ask your questions as well about their experiences about living in Denmark and their struggles and whatnot. They consist of so many different, some of them came with spouses, some of them are married to a Dane, some of them have moved here for work, and there's also students here. There's not as many students, but there are some, mostly exchange students, and some of them are entrepreneurs. It's really a mix of many different backgrounds. There's a much bigger community in Copenhagen than there are in Aarhus or in Aalborg, for example. There are communities like that, American communities. They're just not so big and mainly just engaged on Facebook, on social media, rather than actually have an events. 
but there is a 4th of July event where the Danish government allows at this particular place on the 4th of July where the Americans can celebrate 4th of July and have fireworks because it's illegal to have fireworks in Denmark only on specific times like at New Year's, for example. That one time we can have the fireworks and we have the 4th of July, but it's in the north and I can't remember the name. But it's not as heavily engaged with physical activities as Americans. What's the most common issue or problem you hear from Americans living in Denmark? Job searching. It's mostly the spouse because maybe there is an American couple. One has been offered a position. They come here. And then the other one who is educated as well, thinking, oh, yeah, I can get a job here in Denmark. No problem. And they really, really struggle with their job search. That's the biggest one. And although you've lived abroad for several years, as an American, you're still connected to the States. Have you had any issues personally as an American while living abroad? And do you find that organizations that help Americans living abroad are helpful in resolving those issues? For me, the biggest one is taxes. I've been very fortunate to have family who can either file my taxes for me or who knows someone like an accountant that can do it for me. But it's always very much a struggle in handling taxes and filing my taxes here. For me, I think the biggest is the reverse culture shock. The first seven years of being in Europe, I was not able to go back home financially. And so I didn't see my family for seven years. And then when I came back to visit for the first time, it was such a reverse culture shock. I think American organizations like ACA could help with that transition. And actually, I should consider joining ACA. <laughs> Because I saw that you guys help with taxes and so on. And I'm like, yeah, maybe this could be good, <laughs> to, be, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, I think that could they could really benefit in that way. And I think it would be great if there was something to help with the reverse shock of either moving back or even just visiting when you're away for so long. Because once you start into this mode of integration in another country, you feel sometimes that you lose yourself in the process in some way, not losing yourself, but maybe like trying to find your own way in navigating the American culture again to some extent, because we tend to forget that culture is developing process that changes and how some things are in five years or even 10 years can be very different. It's good to be updated on certain cultural aspects that, that would have changed, for example. What advice would you give an American thinking of moving to Denmark, especially when it comes to looking for work? Definitely look at your options. You can either hire a professional to help you decide which country would be the right fit. That's not something what I do, but I can make a recommendation if you need that type of help forward you to someone I know. You either have a professional help you or really look at different countries that you're interested in, do the research, and then find out which one is the right fit for me and my lifestyle and where do I want to go and experience and then be prepared for the work that needs to be put in it or even thinking about, okay, here are the countries I'm interested in am I willing to work hard to get there? Because Denmark is one of those places where you have to work hard to be there. And that's the other thing. Denmark really needs people, but the immigration policies somehow prevent that to some degree. There is recruiting and so on, but it's not as popular. Not that I'm saying it isn't, but it's not as big as it is like in India or the United States. And so you need to more or less heavily rely on applying for jobs yourself via job posts and through job portals and knowing the right job portals because the ones in the United States are different than the ones that are popular here in Denmark. You really need to understand how to job search and say, am I willing to make this investment and am I really willing to work 100% on this? And that's what you need to decide when you're deciding a country. Think about those aspects to see what is the right fit for you. And especially when it comes to Denmark, am I willing to make this effort to be here? Do you have any final thoughts you'd like to share? Yes. One thing I would like to mention is 
if you decide to make that investment and you're like, I 100% know that I want to job search in Denmark, you're welcome to go on my website at careerdenmark.dk. You're welcome to connect with me on LinkedIn and you can find me at Kate Dahl, Career Consultant for Internationals in Denmark. Please write a note <laughs> and uh, or you can follow me on my pages on my Facebook page on Career Denmark or on my LinkedIn page, company page Career Denmark as well and follow me for my content if you so wish. Thanks, Kate, for chatting with us today. And thank you, Michelle, and have a good one. You too. The American Citizens Abroad podcast is a monthly podcast that is published the second Tuesday of each month. It is edited and produced by me, Michelle, and is a product of American Citizens Abroad. You can find us on Twitter at ACA underscore podcast, on Facebook at American Citizens Abroad podcast, or you can email us at podcast at americansabroad.org. Remember, give us a good rating on Apple Podcasts so other Americans living abroad can find us.